Okay. Maybe this will be the last part. I haven't really decided what I want to say in conclusion, except I've heard every sob story in the world, and I've been guilty of that myself. And I have made some terrible investments. We won't even go into my personal decisions about my life. Uh, but it's okay to do that once when you're young. By young, I mean really under 30. I mean, or it was in my day. Because you st you can you can just write it off as expensive education and find out what you did wrong and why it happened and never do it again. Uh, I continue to hear from people, well, I had a bunch of savings bonds and I didn't know what I was doing and I just cashed them in, you know, and oh, you know, you have to, there are some very good clips up about the little teeny series EE savings bond. Or, well, I took all of my whatever and I sold it, but I hadn't looked into the tax consequences and had I waited and done it this way or that way, it would have been way better. I mean, you shouldn't have been in the investment, which for something like that is long term, if you didn't have a contingency plan for short term. I, I keep thinking now of precious metals, you know. I'm not sure I want to go there. Okay, I've, I've also heard from a lot of people who did have some. And they sold it for whatever reason. And it was just like, well, I, I needed money. I needed the money. Well, why didn't you have a contingency plan? Why were you even in precious metals if you didn't have a contingency plan? Right? Because the older you get the less employable you become, the more health problems you're likely to have. Oh, you are far likelier to become disabled and unable to work and earn an income at least once in your life than you are to die, because you're only going to die once that I know of. You better plan for that. And don't say, well, I'll just file for disability. What disability? Okay, state disability? The $100 a week thing for while you're recuperating from something? Okay. I mean, in my day, I, I needed it once. I got it once. I got it twice. It was like $100 a week. Oh, yeah, that did a lot of good, let me tell you. Paid all my medical bills, everything. As far as health plans, I... I can't address any of that because of Obamacare and I'm in a country uh, with a, you know, socialized medicine health care system. And I have a lot of clips up about that. You have to be logical. You have to learn to quantify your decision making. Make a decision tree. Look that up. Learn how to do it. You can you can decide who to marry if you have a couple of choices, say. How nice. Oh, which one? Which one? Quantify it. Make a decision tree. Amazing.
Okay, and I've, I've made plenty of investment mistakes myself and financial planning and health planning mistakes myself. But I was usually, was usually pretty okay. As far as U.S. Social Security, from what I understand, the only way to apply is with a lawyer. <laughs> Find a good one who works on a contingency basis. You have a much better chance of getting your claim approved because they want their whatever it is, 30% or 33% or th a third, you know, plus legal expenses. Usually is a contingency deal in the United States or it was in my day. Uh, it's not going to be enough. You think you can live off of disability, social security disability. I don't know what it is right now. Maximum $880 a month or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's not much. You know, think make a list. Just take a pencil and a piece of paper. You know, you what whatever your whatever tax you're going to have to pay for where you live, all the taxes everything. Know your tax system and your tax liabilities and how to, you know, your your income tax and stuff and, and how to pay as little as possible. And You know, here's a thought. Sometimes you can negotiate. Believe it or not, you can sometimes negotiate the taxes you're going to pay. I, I did it. I, I did it here in France. <laughs> I didn't speak French very well, and I, I'm not diplomatic. I cer certainly wasn't then. And uh, so my husband did the talking, but I was the impetus. I was like, no, no, uh-uh, I don't understand it. I, I don't see why we owe that. We weren't expecting that. Somebody's got to explain it to us. They're not basing it on anything. Okay. So that's an example, you know. Why not? Be polite. Put things in writing. Lick a stamp, I always say. Lick a stamp. Doesn't Or it didn't in my day in the States cost much to send things certified mail. It used to be an extra dollar over the cost of the stamp. I don't know anything about the U.S. postal system now. But get it there a secured way and be very polite and ask for a face-to-face -face meeting and all that, all that, you know? Why not? What are you going to do? Just obey? <laughs> and, oh, off the grid. The only way you can be fully off the grid is to be naked. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, you know, people have all these ideas, you know, oh, I'm going to be out in the country doing everything for myself. Yeah, what if you fall down? What if you get hurt? You know, all of this. You, you take a pencil and a piece of paper and you write it down. It's not complicated. And you start thinking and taking a note and, and noting and noting. And then you've got it on a piece of paper. And you're like, oh, yeah, well, okay, here's my list. These are my concerns. These are my li liabilities. This, you know. If you if you can compute probabilities, great. I was never good at that, but it's important. But anyway, you can, you, for that, I, I kind of also use my gut feeling. But ultimately, you're going to have to understand probabilities of things, right? And then place a value on them. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So, 
I've been investing, we've been investing in stocks for, well, I know it's been six years, European stocks. They may be a glo global company, fine, but they're European stocks. And I don't recommend doing any kind of business across borders, especially not intellectual property. For financial things, you're going to need a lawyer in more than one country. <laughs> <coughs> and I have enough legal experience on both continents to tell you, then you need to hire a lawyer to assess what your lawyer's done. And don't... I, 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 I've done this. I've done this. As far as lawyers go, I know that I did a divorce myself. I was qualified legally to do that, although I wasn't an attorney in that state. So I did everything myself. I filled out all the forms, I wrote out all the agreements, I prepared them. I paid a lawyer lo locally. She agreed to do this for I think it was I think it was three hundred dollars. I said, Look, I'm going to get everything ready. I don't expect you to well, speak up if you see something really horrible, but this is this is what we want, and I'm just really going to need you to take these things over and file them for me. And I'm going to give everything to you because I, I had been a legal secretary for a long time, and a paralegal too. Uh, I'm going to get everything in front of you just the way lawyers usually like it, simple, turn the page, there's a post-it on there, sign here, check this, well, sign here in her case, or, and then let's go. Everything organized. And it worked out fine, pretty much. There's no reason you can't do that. Um, but don't say, I don't like lawyers, you know. Well, you don't have to like them. I never liked lawyers. Most of them are horrible. There's, most of them are psychopaths, especially the criminal ones. But um, you don't have to like them. You know, don't do the absolutes thing. There are no absolutes. Be realistic. Well, how could I do that, people say. How could I do that? What, you can't take a pencil and a piece of paper? You're illiterate? You know what I'm saying. I'm not into storing things on computers, records on computers. Things get obsolete quickly software gets obsolete, things fail, they get stolen, whatever. Oh, I've got a Faraday cage. Great. But you know what I'm saying. Oh, your U.S. will uh, obviously put your, I think it's two copies you get, whatever, put it in a safe place let people know where it is. You know, maybe make a an accordion file when I die on the front. So if somebody goes into the room and the <laughs> or the the whatever and uh there it is. You know, you've got everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While you're alive, this stuff is going to be very useful to you. Sounds weird, doesn't it? No, you're going to need it. You're going to have to assess it. Periodically, as I've said. What else could we talk about? 
I don't advocate that you do what I did, and this is educational, informational, and for entertainment purposes only. This isn't selling anything or telling anybody what to do. But again, this is a video request mini series. One thing you can be certain of in life is that nothing is certain. And everything does change. Nothing's going to stay the same. Things are probably not going to be the way you envisioned they would be, and they're not going to be, things are not going to go on plan. Oh, the law of five. I have something that I call the law of five. This occurred to me some years ago. Anything that you want to do, increase the cost by five times and the amount of time involved by five times. That may sound very pessimistic, but then if it only takes 3.2 times as much money as you thought it would, which is bad, but you know, you can at least be like, well, at least it wasn't five, you know. Could have been, I had planned for a worst case scenario, five times worse. And I've spoken with some other people. One very nice person was long term in logistics with the Department of Defense in the United States and agreed that that was not a bad rule of thumb. <laughs> uh, Logic. Reason things out. Be logical. Step A, step B, step C. If any one of the steps is not robust, you cannot proceed. Anybody who knows computer programming knows this. You've got to start with something sound and then move to the next logical thing. And just, and with contingencies in mind, because nothing's going to happen the way you uh, think it will. But you can deduce a lot and solve a lot that way. And you must. Where, what kind of money have we been using for these investments in stocks? The cash value in French life insurance policies. Yeah. The laws are completely different over here from the United States. This is not the same legal system at all. Uh, but that's where uh, that that's where it comes from. It's extra money, you know. If anything happens to it, it reduces the value of of the policy, and that has to be factored in. You have to consider that. Whatever you're using as your source of investment money, and cash value and whole life insurance is a great thing for that, really. <laughs> Uh, so you've got your systematic savings. Firewalling things is m like sort of putting up a, 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 a tsunami wall that's actually going to work. And, um, you know, protecting whatever it is that if you're going to start messing around, or e w even if you're not, uh, so that it's, there's only so far the damage could go. Right? You understand that, right? Hmm. I think that's about it. I don't think the U.S. is in good shape, people. 
and I think you know that. I have a lot of clips up with my thoughts on that, and I comment constantly on that, unless I'm on vacation. And how many hours you want to work, you've got to think about that. I was never able to work more than, I would say, 60 or 70 hours a week. Really, it was just too much. I I really, I think that the French 35 hour a week work week, uh, down from 39 when I moved here 20 years ago, is a really good thing. You're going to need more than one vacation a year. And let's be real. It's your health. Raw Dog uh, calls it on the hamster wheel. I loved when he, was, he would do that gesture. On the hamster wheel. Ah. Think about your hamster wheel, okay? How much, uh, how, how big or small does it have to be and how fast you have to turn it to, to maintain. I just don't like debt. I don't want car payments. I don't want a mortgage. I don't want credit cards or store credit. That's me, but I think it's a good idea. Do you want to have it available? Sure. Have a good credit rating? Wonderful. But I don't recommend any debt. One of the reasons I got rid of any American credit cards was because the U.S. dollar was being accepted less and less in 2010 that I saw myself in different countries. And here where I live in 2010, businesses here stopped wanting to... Um, even accept a U.S. issued credit card. Think about it. If you're just going to have one and not use it, I don't think that makes any sense either because uh, you're going to be paying a fee. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe that's worth it to you just, just to have it. You decide for yourself. You write this down and you think about this. Not just think about it. Think about it. Write it down and look at it in front of you, black and white. Now, there was one other thing I, I just thought of, and I didn't sleep last night, and I can't sleep tonight. It's not a problem, because I, I, I don't have to work 9 to 5. Um, I'm willing to, but I don't have to, and I'm not doing it right now. Um, I was talking about vacations, debt, credit cards, U.S. dollar not being accepted. Oh, bank accounts. Over here, uh, one of my banks, as of July of 2013, will not allow any U.S. person to have an account with them anymore. Nothing. And it's a big international bank. That's, but that's just the French one, okay? The French one of their banks. No. I don't know about other countries. It's not a good sign. And another bank here, which is a huge international one, also, uh, wouldn't allow me to open an account because I wanted a small one in U.S. dollars. They didn't want U.S. dollars and I found out later, in fact, they're closing their operations for retail business in the United States. Maybe they have. 
I don't know. But, yow. And it's a big bank. Global bank. Uh, and I think they didn't want me because I have dual citizenship. The other bank, they don't know, they don't need to know. I'm French, right? I, I did, we didn't even get to the citizenship thing, actually, but I think they were thinking, well, listen to her accent, you know, uh, she's probably a U.S. person. Have a passport, a valid passport, for you and everyone in your family. This is another mini-series, but, uh... And I have quite a bit of stuff up on this already, on my two channels here, and I do daily motion also. You know, people talk about bug out bags. You better have one for leaving the country and a plan, a place to go. You better think about this stuff. Oh, I'm never leaving. I keep hearing this. I'm not leaving my country. It's my country and I'm staying here. There are no absolutes. You're telling me you're not going to set up a contingency plan? Not even think about it? And write it down and look at it? Okay. You're stuck there. I, I consider it... Well, you guys are behind a virtual curtain. Um, use a foreign server. Not browser. Server to look at foreign news. If you speak another language, so much the better. And you're going to be in for a rude surprise because you don't know a lot of stuff. And I noticed this was going on right when I came here 20 years ago. I was like, what? What? It's big stuff, too. It's not just economic stuff, believe me. And uh, I call it the virtual curtain. And the lies being told to Americans really got out of hand a year or so ago. A year or two ago. I mean, I was like, what? They're saying what? I know that's not true. For example, if it's if it's about this country and it's something that really I'm not even trusting the the French press. Some of them are still pretty good. You know, if it if it's what I see right here in France where I live and I know that it's wrong and I see it over there even in alternative media even among you guys. Hello. More than once this has happened to me, just with what I really know. Oh. So I think that's about it. Oh, this has been very unstructured, but very, very heartfelt. And I'm going to try to go back to bed and get to sleep. I don't think some things that I've said are typical of what I've been seeing for the many, many, many channels I subscribe to on my two channels and for all the different stuff I've been looking at since I started looking at YouTube in 2008. And especially not since 2010 when I started vlogging. Questions are fine. Keep it nice. And God help us all because this it's really environmental stuff that's that's the priority. You know, and it's not good for the world. So but at least until my environment right here 
is still reasonably normal, whatever that means. I want to have my, my life as organized as possible and my finances in order. And I want to, oh, I want to say, um, visions are better than goals. And if, if you just stick to, well, this is my goal, I'm going for that, I'm going for that. You got the blinders on, you're not going to be very happy. I've never met anybody who does that, who who's happy. Uh, they might be successful, they might be very good at attaining their goals, but they've all ended up burnt out and depressed and disabled, actually, some of them. If, if you've got your blinders on, well, it's bad strategy. But you're going to miss a lot in life. You're going to miss fun and opportunity. Look at it that way. And uh, so good luck, everybody. We're going to need it. But you can do it for yourself. You have to do it for yourself. Remember what I said about family? Oh, I have to help my nieces go to college. What? College in the United States? Okay, that's another issue. So be well. <coughs> and I hope this satisfies the video response. Uh, I did the whole kind of global thing. And I will put in the low bar description things I left out and I will annotate as usual. And then they'll change the aspect ratio again and my annotations will be illegible. Okay, squeeze it easy.